It's time for Over There with Marella Rostroffer. Marella is our European correspondent. She joins us weekly. She is over there, and I think she's in chocolate land. And it's so much more fun to say than Switzerland. So I'm going to keep doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Hello, Jill. How are you? Uh, yes, from uh, chocolate land. Um, I thought we could talk today about uh, France, because as you know, um, uh, in 2022, which is very soon now, uh, they will have the presidentials. And so um, a few uh, people are um, being um, candidate and one of them. Um, is a uh, very uh, unusual uh, person that is attracting a lot of attention. And I thought it was um, maybe worth mentioning him, um, even though for the moment, according to polls, uh, Macron should still keep his presidency. Uh, but as we know, um, a lot is happening in the world um, right now and um, th things can change um, depending on circumstances and therefore I think it's uh, good to mention uh, this um, very controversial man called Eric Zemmour uh, because he's basically new on uh, the political scene of France, but is attracting a lot of attention. Why? Um, he's a journalist and author. He's 63 years old, which means that he is definitely uh, older than President uh, Macron, but is not um, very old either. I think it's an age that is actually appreciated by uh, uh, many people. He was born in France. He's very conservative, if not extremely conservative. Um, and his ideas can definitely be placed on the extreme right of the political spectrum, um, going even further than the ideas of Marine Le Pen. And as you know, Jill, this is not uh, uh, just a statement. Marine Le Pen is herself very controversial, but Eric Zemmour does go um, a little bit further. He wrote, for example, in 2006 already a book called The First Sex, where he basically complains about a society that he thinks is becoming way too feminine. Um, this, uh, this is a rhetoric that is very much used today, so maybe he was just ahead of his time with uh, this kind of books and this kind of, uh, of, of topics. Um, that being said, in November, November 30th, 2021, he announced uh, that he would run for uh, president in 2022. Um, a big difference since we spoke about Marine Le Pen, uh, a big difference between them is the difference that they make uh, about uh, Islam uh, in the sense that Marine Le Pen makes a difference between Islam and what uh, she would call private Islam and the religion that, you know, you uh, practice for yourself and the political Islam that uh, has, in her opinion, very different goals. Um, and she also states that Islamism is, uh, in that sense, compatible with the principles of the French Republic. Uh, Zemmour doesn't make this distinction um, he goes even that far that he said that if he would become president, he would forbid uh, children born in France to get uh, Arab names. Um, I think he would even extend that to just any foreign name. So children born in France would have to uh, get uh, French names. 
Um, last Sunday, uh, while he was here having his first campaign meeting in La Seine Saint Denis, um, uh, some violence erupted, and uh, he was uh, he was himself uh, um, a little bit injured on his wrist, apparently. Um, his party will be named or is named Reconquest. Um, I guess that. Um, doesn't need to be commented. It just shows what um, he thinks is necessary for France. And um, I think in the, uh, in in the speech that he in which he announces to run for president, um, he basically gives most of his program. Um, in focusing a lot on the history of France and everything that, in his opinion, is uh, uh, vanishing today. Um, a few points that uh, are mentioned in uh, that uh, speech is the fact that, for example, regular people um, do not recognize their country anymore. And he puts that, this is where one sees that he's actually an author because he puts that in very romanticized terms in the fact you go to the library, you go to the bakery, you go to the post office and you don't recognize your country anymore. So he makes it very um, romanticized even. Um, he, he also uh, mentioned the fact that France was the country of Jeanne d'Arc, um, Napoleon Bonaparte, or the General de Gaulle, uh, the country of the Cathedral Notre Dame, Voltaire and Rousseau. Uh, he mentioned um, some singers, some very classic singers of France. He, me he mentions some um, uh, uh, people from the movie industry, meant, but but that are very very French, and so he basically tries to show that every everything that was um, part of the spirit of the soul of France is basically disappearing. And um, he also mentioned very strongly that that has a lot to do with the current president, which in his opinion is completely incapable of taking any good decision. Uh, the speech is also against what he calls the elites, the journalists, the politicians, the college students, um, the religious leaders and so on. Um, then he goes back to one of his uh, main focus, which is uh, immigration. Um, and he, of course, um, speaks a lot against foreigners who don't integrate, but want to basically change France to their cultures or their ideas or their philosophies. Um, he speaks against, uh, he speaks against a lot of things, but he, he speaks also against the European Union, which in his opinion takes away from France the um, the, the aptitude to uh, take uh, its own decision and to decide what's best for the future of France and is basically just a uh, um, union of, of technocrat and, and, and bureaucrat and people who have no idea what they are doing. And to summarize all of this uh, uh, speech, he calls it basically decadence. Um, then he continues by uh, explaining a little bit about himself, why he finds himself in this position of uh, having to save France. And it's because while he was himself a journalist and an author, and he was participating to a lot of radio shows, of uh, TV shows, um, he thought that this was his job, but that um, he would leave the, the the faith of France in the hands of uh, people in the polit political world 
to uh, to just uh, protect France. Uh, but after so many years of observation, it could only come to one conclusion, and that is um, uh, France is disappearing, at least the France that he knew and the France that should remain uh, France. And that's when he decided to jump himself in the political uh, crowd uh, with his reconquest party and try to basically save uh, the country that he loves so much. It's um, for the moment uh, so that according to the polls is definitely still behind Marine Le Pen and all the other candidates. And um, it would be difficult to imagine that he could just jump over everybody. But we have been surprised before. Uh, and as I said, a lot of things can happen in the next months that could either um, basically make him invisible with just a few percentage of people voting for him or things could go in another direction and give him a, a boost and basically uh, disrupt the election. Uh, because let's not forget that even if he would not have enough for himself to be elected president, he can also, of course, take a lot of people away from uh, parties that are already on the right spectrum and that are counting on all this percentage and that uh, basically having one person more on that side means also maybe having to share uh, uh, all of these people. For example, he is um, very um, uh, keen on understanding the Gilets Jaunes. As you remember, Gilles, that was a very big movement in France and it's not dead, it's still there and um, they, they, they tend to like him very much, uh, while before they were more tending to Marine Le Pen. Uh, so it, this, this, this new incomer, if one can call, it, call him like this, might uh, not win the presidency, but might um, uh, disrupt uh, the, um, the chances of, uh, of people uh, that uh, were there before him on the right side, very conservative, but in his opinion, not um, not conservative enough. Thank you very much, Mirella Rostrofer, over there. My pleasure.